is on the back of his chair. Shocking. Like I told Puffy, I don't let men take me out, sir. I'm good. <laughs> I'll do no damage. <laughs> Y'all, Cat has been spilling tea for days and years. Now he's exposing Lori for allegedly being a high class escort and Steve for being her pimp. Cat has been on a roll these past couple of days and it looks like he is ready to take his beef with Steve Harvey to the next level. Cause he has some pretty wild things to say about Steve and his daughter Lori Harvey. According to Cat, Steve allegedly sees Lori as nothing but a commodity and he has been allegedly pimping her out to men in the industry, including Diddy. Y'all remember how Lori started dating Diddy like five minutes after Kim Porter passed? Well, according to Kat, this was all orchestrated by Steve. Yeah, Kat is now coming at Steve and Diddy in full force and he is not letting down anytime soon. Um, did Steve really force Lori into freak offs with Diddy? Huh. What's happening, huh? I'll be back to you with JD and Kat. Yeah. Jermaine Dupree. Y'all, Diddy been freaking all over the industry. Okay, so it looks like there was some more drama going on in the Steve Harvey family, and it's more than we thought, and now Diddy is being dragged into the mess. For a while now, there has been some division in the Harvey family because Steve's biological kids feel like he is always picking Marjorie and her kids, especially Lori, over them. But according to Cat Williams, there is a simple reason for that. That's that Steve has allegedly been pimping Lori out to different men. Now looking out from the outside, it's pretty obvious that Steve indeed he prefers Lori over his own kids because he has always been more present in her life than his own kids. For example, his son Broderick revealed that Steve was absent for the first 16 years of his life. I didn't really have my dad full time into my life until I was 16. Right? But that's not all because there are reports that he didn't even attend the high school graduation of his twins. Now somebody who knew the twins in high school made this revelation saying, I went to high school with the twins. They were a few years ahead of me, but people always talked and all eyes were on them because of who their father was. He wasn't present at their graduation. But then when it came to Lori, he was all hands on deck with her and he even took her on a frequent father-daughter date. Me on one of our annual father-daughter dates in my favorite Japanese restaurant restaurant and you just started talking to me about guys and you just told me that you you know always supported me and you'd always be there for me no matter what and you loved me unconditionally according to an insider this always made steve's biological daughters especially the twins feel a type of way because they felt neglected when compared to lori but as it turns out steve allegedly had an ulterior motive for those father daughter dates because what he was allegedly doing during those dates was actually coaching lori on how to catch and keep a man and get this he wasn't teaching lori because he wanted to help her and land her a better man he was teaching her because he planned to allegedly pimp her out to powerful men in the industry for clout and fame. I mean, think about it. Lori has had way more dating opportunities than Steve's own daughters, which is interesting because she was the only one that he took on those father-daughter dates. Now, if you're wondering why Steve allegedly taught her and not his daughters, it's because he allegedly realized that Lori naturally had an affinity for it. Plus, it also helped that she has always been beautiful and men are naturally attracted to her. And Steve Steve was smart about it and apparently he capitalized on it. And get this, his kids have always known about this and it caused a sibling rivalry between his daughters and Lori because they felt left out. Last year, a source revealed that there was a lot of tension going on in the family because the kids had gotten sick and tired of Lori getting all the attention. The source said, he did the right thing, adopted Marjorie's kids and loves them like his own. But there's a lot of dissension among the blended Harvey clan. There has unfortunately been some jealousy lingering amongst the siblings over Lori who's the most famous of all Steve's kids, taking over the spotlight with her high-profile love life. Well, Cat Williams is now stepping into the chat and spilling some tea on Steve Harvey. And listen, when I tell y'all he spilled some hard tea on Steve, child. Now, if you've been following Cat for a while, then you probably already know that he is not Steve's biggest fan. And it's not that he considers Steve a rival in the comedy business, it's that he doesn't respect Steve at all. Now, one thing about Cat is that he has some very high moral standards, which isn't easy for anybody 
everybody in the industry to match. Cause y'all know how these celebs are, selling their souls for the highest bidder. Well listen, the bid didn't even need to be up that high cause y'all would be surprised what goes on in the industry. But anyways, Cat has always felt like Steve sold his morals to the industry and didn't have a spine of his own. It got even worse when Cat realized that Steve had been stealing his jokes and then passing them off as his own. TV in 2018, you came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. He claimed that Steve would come to his show with the sole purpose of stealing them and making them his. And he caught on very early. But Steve didn't stop there because according to Kat, Steve also stole his sob story about how he was broke and living in his car. Remember how Steve has always told the story of how he had to live in his car because he only had $35 to his name? I used to spend the night in hotel parking lots what was I gonna do? I ain't had nowhere to stay, so I lived in the car. I had $35. And I said, come on, God, man, I've been trying to make this dream come true. You done left me out here like this. Well, according to Cat, this was another thing that Steve stole from him because Steve was never broke and never had to live in his car. Like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey wasn't never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? You told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. That, uh yeah, I don't know, y'all. Two people could have lived in their car, but it's just insane. According to Kat, that's not the only thing that Steve has done because he has done way more. Now, remember how Steve's other kids have been feeling that type of way about how Lori's dating life is bigger than theirs? Well, according to Kat, the reason that Lori's love life is up there is that Steve has always had a hand in her relationships, even going as far as to pimp her out to different men. And as it turns out, out, one of the men he allegedly pimped her out to was Diddy. Y'all remember in 2019 when Lori started dating Diddy? It was so random and out the blue because nobody saw it coming and it was disturbing on so many levels. For one, Lori was only 22 years old at the time while Diddy was almost 50. And if that 28 year old age gap wasn't bad enough, it gets creepier when you realize that by the time Lori was born, Diddy was already in his late 20s and had a five year old son, which means that Diddy's son was older than his girlfriend. Yeah, that's a little bit creepy. And according to Kat, that's what made this weirder was the fact that Diddy had been in Lori's life since the time she was a teenager. See, Diddy and Steve ran in the same circles, even if they weren't besties. And Diddy definitely knew Lori when she was a minor. So the fact that he would even pursue a relationship with her was just all kinds of weird. However, Kat claimed that Lori didn't exactly have a say in the relationship because Steve pretty much forced her into that relationship. What makes it even weirder is the fact that Lori started dating Diddy only months after his ex Kim Porter passed away and when Kim was alive she had a great relationship with Kim. She was pretty upset when Kim passed. She even paid her respect in a now deleted Instagram post where she said having a hard time processing this one you were such a beautiful person inside and out. I'm so glad I told you how much I loved and missed you the last time I saw you. Your energy was truly something special. An angel on earth and now in heaven. R.I.P. Mama Kim. Mm -hmm. I wonder how she knew Kim Porter. Is it because she was dating Diddy's son? Well, anyway, she was so upset over Kim Porter's death, but she started dating Kim's baby daddy only a couple months after Kim passed. Either Lori was super two-faced or the relationship was against her will. Well, according to Kat, it was the latter because Steve took the opportunity of Kim's passing to slide Lori right in. Kat pointed out how insane it was that Steve would pimp Lori out to Diddy, of all people. I mean, Diddy has always had a reputation for being a bad guy, and while the general 
public didn't know how bad it was until Cassie dropped her lawsuit, people in Diddy's circle knew what was going on. According to Cassie, it was an open secret that Diddy used to put his hands on his girlfriends, including her, Kim Porter, and his first baby mama, Misa Hilton. But Steve didn't care about that. All he wanted was for Lori to be attached to a big name in the industry and give him more clout. But once Lori went public with her relationship with Diddy, she suddenly deleted the tribute that she posted to Kim Porter from her Instagram. But y'all know what they say, you can never really delete anything from the internet. So she went public with Diddy and they were spotted out about less than six months after Kim passed. People were waiting for Steve to step in the situation and put an end to the BS, but according to Kat, he was not one of those people because he could tell from the start that it was a weird relationship that had Steve's name written all over it. And true to that, it wasn't long before we saw Steve and Marjorie on vacation with Lori and Diddy. And when I tell you that we were all shook as F, listen, not only were they aware of their relationship, but they gave it their full blessing for the relationship because Diddy and Lori were fully packing on the PDA. Now this has all been very disturbing, but what really got people's attention is the color of Lori's nail polish. Every single time that she was spotted out and about with Diddy, she had on white colored nail polish. And y'all know what Cassie said about the white nails. In her lawsuit, Cassie claimed that Diddy used to force her to wear white nail polish.